everyone and welcome back to the Valley's Most In-Depth Weather Forecast video. Monday evening, we are 48 hours removed from a very interesting day across the Valley on Saturday with a tornado warning in Mahoning County. We had lots of thunderstorms that produced some hail and some strong winds and some uh, some heavy rain around the region on Saturday. Thankfully though, in our viewing area, we had no confirmed tornadoes, but that supercell thunderstorm that rolled through Mahoning County, kind of hugging Route 224, definitely looked pretty mean for a while. If you watched our coverage Saturday afternoon, we talked about uh, how this was a true supercell structure to that uh, thunderstorm, something that isn't all that common around here. Um, even if we do have supercellular structures to our storms, a lot of times they're kind of rain wrapped and kind of hard to uh, hard to see. But our Boardman camera looking west towards Canfield was able to pick out the structure really well uh, of that thunderstorm that prompted the tornado warning. Uh, and you know that that storm could have very easily dropped a tornado at any point. That's why we were taking it pretty seriously in our in our wording uh, on. TV and on our live stream. Thankfully though, it did not produce a tornado locally. We did have a scattering of tornadoes across uh, parts of the region though on Saturday. The storm survey teams, or the damage survey teams I should say, from both the Cleveland National Weather Service Office and the Pittsburgh National Weather Service Office, well they've been busy over the last couple of days and they did, found, uh, they did find, I should say, EF1 tornado damage uh, in Belmont County in Ohio. Uh, this is down close to I-70. And then over into Western PA in Washington County, also an EF1 tornado there. In Ohio, this is in Holmes County, west of New Philly, west of I-77. The western part of Holmes County, an EF0 tornado. Thankfully, did not do much damage and was not on the ground for that long. And also an EF1 was confirmed out in West Central Ohio. This is you know pretty far out into the western half of the state in Marion County. The western half of that county had an EF1 tornado but no tornado around here locally. It was a busy couple of hours for us, that is for sure. I think we live streamed for about three and a half hours Saturday afternoon. We got the live stream going plenty early so that we were ready when the the beefier stuff arrived and boy did it arrive and yeah we we were on tv live during the duration of that tornado warning late in the afternoon on saturday hectic couple of hours all right a little climate news uh, today and this came as no surprise we expected this but july 2023 officially the hottest july on record globally and making it the hottest month on record globally look how much uh you know real estate here is covered by this deep red Everywhere you see that deep red color, that is the warmest July on record for that uh, zone. And you see all these deep red colors. And even where you don't have the deeper red, you have the paler red. It's hard to find much blue on this map, cooler than average temperatures. Now, locally, our temperatures were nothing to write home about in July. But of course, globally speaking, it was a much different story and uh, no surprise. Uh, considering what's going on in the atmosphere with a lot of different factors, including, of course, man-made global warming, but you throw on top of that an emerging El Nino in the Pacific, which warms global temperatures anyway. Uh, it's uh, There's a lot of speculation, and uh, we may be years away from true answers on this, but the big underwater volcano in the Pacific that erupted in January of 2022 might have spewed so much water vapor into the atmosphere that it is impacting global temperatures here in 2023 because some of these records are just crazy that are being uh, broken and you know you would expect a lot of records to be broken these days with with global warming and things like that but the volume of records and the degree in which these records are surpassing the old records is really remarkable uh, a lot of these global and regional records this year and that underwater volcano eruption last year might have something to do with that. The The evidence of that is fairly inconclusive, but there's a lot of speculation about it right now. And again, we may be years away from really truly knowing, but you add a lot of water vapor to the atmosphere, that water vapor can act to trap in heat. And maybe that has some to do with the kind of ridiculous nature of some of these records that are being set globally here in 2023. All right, back in August of 2023, locally, it's been a wet week. Uh, at the airport, as of the issuance of the climate report, at about 520, we had only had a trace of rain. Now, some pl other places have seen more. I'll show you the map in just a second. But at the airport, uh, prior to today's rain, uh, we're running, you know, over a half an inch above average, thanks to the rains of the last several days. And, you know, the airport, as is sometimes the case, it's only one spot. And we've had much more rain than this in parts of our area so far in August. And 24-hour rainfall totals look like this uh, in downtown Youngstown, close to a quarter of an inch. Same thing along 224 Boardman area. 
0.45 down in Cal Calcutta over the last 24 hours and over towards uh, southeastern Mercer and into Lawrence County, tenth of an inch to two tenths of an inch, pretty common with today's wet weather. It's been kind of a soggy afternoon. All of this has been pretty light. There's been no lightning and thunder with it, but uh, it's been a soggy handful of hours. This will become a little more scattered in nature from here on out as we go through the evening and into the overnight. Missing out on severe weather here locally. There was a tornado warning for a time this afternoon around Washington, D.C. I don't think there was a confirmed tornado with that. There are some thunderstorms approaching western Ohio right now. Uh, might there be a thunderstorm around here by the end of the night tonight? I can't rule that out. Um, small chance, and I don't think severe weather is very likely at all, but again, a scattering of showers throughout the night, and one last band might move through right around daybreak tomorrow morning. Uh, 5, 6, 7 a.m. Might be some thunder with this. After this, though, I, I suspect we'll get into a several-hour dry period for our Tuesday. Mid-morning through early afternoon looks pretty benign. In fact, the sun will probably be out for a fair amount of the time before this trough of low pressure pivots down out of the you know, lower Great Lakes and gives a scattering of showers back into the region for late afternoon into the evening. There might be a thunder shower in some spots. Clouds will hang tough into Wednesday morning. We'll call it a mix of sun and clouds for the bulk of Wednesday, keeping a dry forecast for Wednesday, Wednesday night, and for Thursday as well. Now, our next weather maker is Thursday night with this cool front. Probably not much lightning and thunder with this, but it'll probably produce some showers Thursday night. A lot of that's probably after the mid-evening, and most importantly for the big night of high school football coming up Friday evening. It's going to be gorgeous. I mean, Friday and over the weekend, hardly a cloud in the sky. Some beautiful, beautiful weather is coming up. If you're a little bit tired of the rain... Uh, this is your forecast. Uh, you know, Thursday night, good chance for showers, but Friday turns out sunny, hardly a cloud in the sky, Saturday, Sunday. Maybe we get grazed by a shower and thunderstorm here and there next week, Monday, into Monday night. Today's CPC, Climate Prediction Center, 6 to 10 day outlook, looks pretty nice if you're tired of the rain. They're going to get some beneficial rains in parts of the southwest, including California. But east of the Rockies, this does look like a warmer pattern. It looks like a drier pattern taking us into next week. And speaking of warmer, our averages over the next 10 days, our long-term averages, fall from 82 to 80. Our forecast for early next week is for afternoon highs to be 8, 9, 10 degrees above average. I think we're going to flirt with 90 a couple of times starting Sunday and taking us into early next week. And, you know, a lot of school districts will be starting over the next couple of weeks, some this week, many more next week. And this week is not that hot. But next week, especially the first half of next week, does look pretty darn hot. So we will uh, fine-tune that forecast, of course, as we get a little bit closer. But all systems go for a great week one of high school football weather-wise this week. And it looks like a nice, quiet weekend, which makes yours truly happy. I won't have to track weather on a Saturday afternoon, unlike this past weekend. It was a very interesting day, but it was a long day. I'm glad I won't have to do it again anytime real soon. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday night. Let's do it again back here on Tuesday.